Natural kind of death. <laughs> Beyond shock. What was that? Beyond horror into total terror. <laughs> Murder runs wild. Blood runs cold. Deep red. The conjecture is that an act of bloodshed was once committed in that house. running with you. Movie Club. <laughs> I'm your host Kevin. With us is Aaron. Ciao, Bella. This week we're going, to do, we're going to be doing the classic 1975 thriller, Deep Red, starring no one in particular that uh, we could speak of. David Sadly, Hemmings, I'm guessing. That world famous actor. He actually did a few things after he this. He did look familiar to yeah, me. I had to go do that. some research. As you know, each week on the B Movie Club, we discuss certain guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the past. You can reach us on our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Give us the thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube, KD9575, and hit the subscribe button. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the B Movie Club. So, uh, Blood Red. Give us not Blood Red, Deep Red. What the hell, what the hell is Deep Blood Red? red? And you like it more than me. I do. Deep Red. What what is this all about? Aaron? Well, it starts off with psychics. That's always a good beginning in a horror movie. Right. And she, of course, has taken over. She can ah! hear the, ah! the evil and hear the thoughts. Murder, murder. She tries to drink water and spits it out and <laughs> dribbles it. Yeah. Exactly. Bad scene. What, <laughs> what else happens? Basically, without giving too much away, because this is one of Kevin's new favorite horror movies, yep. is uh, there's a killer afoot in Rome, right. and you need to look out, because if you even try to investigate anything going on with this... That's right. The gloves come on. Zip, zip. Shh. Yeah. Warning, warning. Yeah, so if you're around, you see like a psychic murder in a window... Just walk away. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Not your business. Pretend like you're a New Yorker. None of your business. None ya. 
Sa sa save your skin, baby. Don't get involved. <laughs> so the psychic has a premonition of a murder that had occurred. That's right. Reading um, somebody's thoughts. Yep. That night, she's brutally murdered. Um, there were witnesses, however. Yes, there were. And a killer, like in a trench coat and a hat. That's right. Scampers it, off. What's fascinating, in a large city like Rome, you figure there might be some people on the street. You know, but not, you know, not in this case where you can murder someone in front of a large plate glass window right. looking over like a city square and there's not a soul. Not a soul. So the police are investigating but not doing a very good job. So not this so one much. guy, what is his job? Uh, yeah, what, the, the, the pianist? British? He's a P that's exactly right. He's, he's a not, pianist. Not a private investigator, not a police officer. He's just, he was the witness though. That's right. So he feels compelled to get to the bottom of the crime and he picks up a news reporter along the way. Is that's that right? right. Who, frankly, I thought was the killer. Maybe she is. We don't want to spoil it. We don't uh, know who the killer is. Yeah. So one by one. She seems suspicious. She does seem suspicious. They start investigating the crimes, what's going on, and people are getting a little too close. One by one. And each time there's this little preamble of those scary, childish music, zoom-ins of like, here's a doll sitting there, and there's some red stuff, and uh oh here I'm putting my gloves, my black leather gloves with a crazy zipper on the back. I need to get some of those. Those are awesome gloves, the big golden zipper. Right. And there's a scene that I found, I'm going to jump ahead a bit, there's a scene in the beginning of the movie where the killer is in the men's restroom. Did you notice this? There's a scene yes. where she's washing it, but the mirror's all effed up, even who, though it's... Who did you say was... Did you just give away I just said something? I said a killer was in the men's restroom. Mm -hmm. Washing the face, washing the face. A guy walks in there, looks at the killer. Okay. The killer was like out. vomiting or right. something, making some disgusting sounds. Okay. You've seen the movie? You know who the killer is? Was it weird that a guy walks into the men's restroom and sees the, a person washing their face in there and well, doesn't see, go like, what the heck? We don't know. I don't want to spoil it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to dance around the issue. Um, oh, at one point where we still see the killer leave and we don't know who the killer is, that person seems to be a different shape than the actual killer at the end of the movie. Did you see that? Did there's you a lot of that? There's a lot of little things like that that we are left to wonder what the story is. You know what I'm saying? You know, without giving too much away, people die, we find out who the killer is, but you don't really know who it is until the very end. Right. There's a lot of interesting twists and turns, and I have to say I, I like this movie better uh, the second time I watch it. The first time I was kind of wandering around the house, and frankly this was my uh, the third of a Dario Argento uh, marathon, right. so I, I was already slipping into a bit of a coma. Uh, but actually, this one is actually the best. It's dynamite. Give a little backstory of Deep Red. Director, auteur, Dario Argento, mm -hmm. the famed Italian master of horror, if you will. Absolutely. I'm ashamed to admit this was actually the first Argento movie I'd ever seen. It's but not shocking. the last. Not the last. It was, it was dynamite. It was dynamite. I'm jumping ahead here. Uh, this type of genre is actually called giallo. 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 It's Not a, like cherry giallo. No. Okay. But um, <laughs> and it's a it's a specific genre. It deals with kind of crime thriller horror where it's a lot of first person where you see the hands of the killer kind of doing their thing. Yeah, that was kind of interesting because I kind of like that when you're looking through the killer's eyes. Absolutely. John Carpenter used to do some of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? A lot of them, like Halloween, Friday the 13th, those kind of slasher films were directly inspired by these giallos. Uh, the first person killer kind of thing going on there. There's also a, a, a reoccurring theme of the protagonist trying to solve it is not a law enforcement type. It's right. typically an outsider kind of in unfamiliar circumstances, unfamiliar situations trying to get to the bottom of this. Right. Um, some other things that you see in a lot of Argento films is somebody gets killed through a plate glass window. Oh, that's, yeah. So that's a lot of that going on. There's also um, another thing that happens where the protagonist 
three quarters of the way through the movie, remember something. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Hang on. Wait a minute. It's coming back to me now. I've had the answer all along. Right, exactly. It's, it's like the secret. Yeah. Really, is what the, it is. The secret? <laughs> Damn secret. I still haven't won the lottery. Very sad. You have to think positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the kind of reoccurring themes you'll see in these kind of movies. And again... They're, they're thrillers, they're kind of slashers, but it's a little bit more artistic than that. You know what I mean? It's not just a, you know, teenagers asleep at the Camp Crystal Lake. This is, this I'm is sorry, a real did deal. you just use the word artistic? It's very artistic. I think artistic. We're, re we're reaching there. Uh, he is very famous for the way he has people die. Absolutely. Now, in this movie, this is frankly tame uh, compared to some of the other ones that I watched uh, people die. This one he was thinking, he wanted deaths that people could relate to. Not nice. It, he, I read that uh, not a lot of people can imagine what it's like being shot, but they can imagine being uh, put through a plate glass window. Everybody's been cut. <laughs> or, or burned. Or, or burned, or scalded with boiling water. Right. People can relate to exactly. that kind of traumatic uh, effect. Right. So that was very interesting. Household injury type thing. Household injury, yes. Yeah. Damage with a cleaver, for example. Who has... Wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. Who has it cut off one of their fingers from time to time? My bad. Uh, uh, now, now, he's here very interesting. Did you read... That every time you see the killer's hands, that's actually Dario Argento. Right. Those are his hands. And what else? He, had, he was quite an interesting little character. Uh, he prefers to ha have uh, beautiful women murdered. He doesn't feel it's fair to have unattractive uh, women murdered. And he will not discuss this. Apparently he has walked out of interviews when people have taken offense to this. Why are all attractive people murdered? Uh, I'm out of here. I'm sorry. That's right. That's a bridge Son too far. Son of a bitch, why would you ask me How dare question? you? How dare you? It's a gotcha question. <laughs> it's a gotcha question. I will not discuss this. <laughs> So, but one thing that I found particularly uh, creepy about this movie is the soundtrack. That music that you hear that reoccurs over and over, over whenever... and over again. Right. There's a couple of pieces from this that are uh, exceptionally creepy. I was going to play this at Brianna's baby shower. <laughs> this is a very important song because it really kind of establishes kind of a pattern for the killer in this. Whenever this killing is about to occur, you hear this music. This is part of the killer's... Right, and you don't really motif. know. It's like you know at the beginning... Oh my God, my iPhone's out of control. <laughs> you, they, sh they give you a, an idea at the beginning what's going on. But you don't know who these people are right. or how it really relates to what's going on right. until the very end. Exactly. And it all kind of comes together over Absolutely. the course. Absolutely. And there's a, there's a false end. They reveal the killer who's uh -huh. been dragged off by a garbage truck and all this horrible stuff. I... It was a bad day for that. Yeah, guy. yeah. I can't relate to actually being dragged by a garbage truck and then getting your... Oh, my God. And then getting your, your head. Knocked Squished. into the curb, yeah. followed by a car run over your head until it pops. That's always great. Now, that happens, so you're like, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. That guy's the killer? Hmm. And you're like, but well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't I see him and the killer at the same time? Wah, wah, hmm. wah. So, I don't, we're not going to spoil it. Because I think it's it's it really kind of took me by surprise. I, I thought we already had spoiled. We have we have not spoiled it. So we're just going to discuss uh, interesting things now. Yes. All right. Did you read that uh, that Carlos transsexual lover is actually a woman? Yes. There's was a... portrayed by a woman. <laughs> yes. And I have to tell you, that's a damn good job because when I saw the the the, the, the lover, I was like, I, I didn't even question that it was a, a guy. Well, I think they they dubbed a, a fake. American deeper voice. No, hey, I'm pretty sure they dubbed Sailor? everyone in this film. Right, but you understand, it wasn't the original actress playing the transsexual man. It w would have had a different voice than the Italian dubbing. You know, when you they know, brought in James Earl Jones. You don't think she was talking like this? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Ciao, how are you today? They brought in Barry White <laughs> to help with the uh, the transsexual's voice. So that was always good. It was that shocking. was interesting, interesting. <laughs> what else? Uh, let's see, I read that Dario Argento uh, feels that he makes his lead character, he feels that it mo most likely resembles him and his personality. So that's nice. So Argento is a David Hemming. 
Hmm. If that means something to you, bravo! Right, we're gonna watch it again. <laughs> like, what would instead of what would Jesus do? What would Dario do? This is a good question. Although to that ask. is a great name, Dario Argento. Argento. That's a fabulous name. Yep. If you're gonna have yourself an Italian baby, that's what you that's should name. Hey, why not? <laughs> Uh, anything else? Oh, well, we gotta talk about David Hemming. What can we say about him? Barbarella Psychedella, what a crazy cockle shell. You know, sing along if you know the same song to Barbarella. So, I kept looking, I'm like, I know this guy from somewhere. And I'm going through the database, I'm like, no, 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 Barbarella. Uh, Where do I sign up? Oh my god, and you've got to go look at his picture as Dildano. <laughs> Hopefully all of you out there, because it's another Italian film. Right. I believe that's Zeffirelli. I believe his uh, body is buried in Firenze, as a matter of fact. Very nice. So apparently it's all, it's like a spider web. Everything is connected. It's all, it's connected. all Italian. What's well, that weird thing where it's like, and I always wonder how they do this, the main protagonist is a British actor speaking English, right? Well, everyone everybody around else, him is dubbed. Everybody else is Italian speaking Italian. It's like, how do they do that? They just wave, okay, now say your line. Say your line. Say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> right. So. so I'm guessing that when it is in Italy, everybody's speaking Italian, but they've dubbed David Hemming? Could I be. I don't know. I don't know. Good questions. Hmm. Shall we move on to uh, to viewer mail? Ah, uh, yes, we do have some viewer mail. But first, I want to hear a little extra music. What about this? Well, that's a good now, one, too. Turn it up. Tell me, what came first, this or Halloween? This came first. Yeah. So, this is a... Com Halloween did a complete rip-off of yeah. this. Where is the lawsuit? Because this is not the same artist. This is what's the name of this uh, band? It was. Um, uh, oh gosh. Like the Gremlins or the Goblins. Uh, Goblin. The Goblin. This, this is a total ripoff. Yeah, this was creepy too. So I'm concerned about that because I didn't see anything on this even discussing this. This is a total ha Halloween totally ripped this off. It's a shame. Because this is 1975. When did Halloween come out? 78, 79. Yep. Something like that. Three so I don't better. understand. That's a total ripoff because that music is creepy. That's why Halloween ripped it off. I have a question. I want to know what kind of the color is the movie? So what kind of color is the movie? Well, as a matter of fact, it is <laughs> profoundly red. Profondo Rosso. Profondo Rosso. Little known, this is part of a trilogy, and in the other two movies, Inferno and what's the word I can't pronounce? Susperia. Susperia. All the lighting is very bold blue and bold red. It was almost like those old 3D glasses uh, colors. Second question for you. The movie is deep enough. The movie is how deep? This movie is how deep? This is a very interesting question. Is it deeply disturbing? Deeply offensive? I... <laughs> these are good questions. The deep? The deep? How deep is your love? How I, deep is your this love? Is, this is a very... I, Scholars will be studying this. Oh, we can't give an answer. Maybe right. our children will know the answer because... How deep? Too deep. That's right. This is a good question. What do you see in the mirror? What do you see in the mirror? This is a good question because what you don't realize is there's a, a scene where something is reflected in a mirror that turns out to be of great importance. I remember when the scene first occurred, I'm like, did I just see something there? I could have sworn. But I didn't know. I just kind of, okay, whatever. I you know, forgot it. But later in the movie, it all comes revealed what the significance of that is. So, so what do you see in the mirror? I don't know if I should give her away. The killer. You do see the killer in the mirror, so. Not the man in the mirror. I'm, I'm looking, looking at the man in the mirror. Unless the killer's a man. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, that was a little red herring. <gasps> whoop, whoop, whoop. Profundo red herring. <laughs> Profundo Russo fish. Fish. 
All right. So I, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was great. Uh, you have to accept that it's very 70s, uh, but I thought it was dynamite. If you haven't seen it, it is not streaming on Netflix, but you can get it on Amazon Instant uh, Video like or whatever. Two ninety nine, and there's a bootleg copy on YouTube, but the right. sound cuts out from time to time. Yeah, it's good, though. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. And the other three, it's part of a trilogy. The other, th uh, the other two are also on YouTube and much better quality bootleg uh, ripoffs. Uh, yeah. I recommend her. Inferno has some very uh, interesting uh, death scenes. He's really famous for the death scenes. Very yeah. creative. There are also a bunch of different versions of this movie out and about. So I did not aware. know yeah. that. They, they keep cutting it and recutting it, adding scenes, taking scenes out. So just be aware of that little uh, wrinkle as well. Hmm, good a wrinkle times. in time, a wrinkle you time might say. Time. So next week, I'm moving away from this, the scariness. We're going to be hitting the John Cusack classic, Gross Point Blank. I love that. I have the soundtrack, you know. It's Both soundtrack. versions. Both versions. Lots of the specials and the clash. Takes you back to a good time. Good That's time. a great movie. It is streaming instantly on Netflix, so check it out. Let me know what you think. Send any comments, questions, favorite scenes, favorite quotes. And we may talk about it on the show. Absolutely. And I'm trying to get Kevin to do... Um, What's that movie? The jazz Singer. Not the, well, I do want to do the Jazz Singer Yentl. and Yentl, but my new favorite one I want to do is Wings of Desire, the Vim Vendors classic. Womp, 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 womp. So write to us, tell us what you think. They're good times, good times. So remember to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club, give us the thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube and subscribe, it's totally free. And follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. Ah, yes. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is. Virgine <laughs> Suprata. What is awesome? So there you have it. Good times had by all. Next week, gross point blank. Check it out. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, Aaron, for joining us. Salam alaikum. And be well. Mm -hmm.